I, you can't make this shit up. I mean, that's that's one of the weirdest things about like going into this game. strangest thing that I found in the with Zero is just the fact that people cry so much. Hey everybody, welcome to the Undead Zone show. My name is Space Mexican. Unfortunately, you cannot see me because I am live on vacation poolside in a re luxury resort right now. Uh, but I do have my lovely co-host here, uh, let's start off with the most beautiful one, Rytus. Can you say hello? Uh, uh, hi. I thought you were going to say Laz. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I think all everybody thought I was going to say Laz. And uh, the uh, obviously the most awesomeness, Laz Tail. What's up, guys? Welcome to the stream. Uh, we have a special guest today. Uh, his name is Tendaris. He kind of goes by a couple names. Uh, Tendi, Tendaris, Tenderass, um, <laughs> Tender. Uh, Tender Chickens. Tender chickens. Uh, why don't you say hello to all the viewers? Hello, viewers. <laughs> oh, sorry, Duncan. Unfortunately, I am in a thong right now, so I cannot turn my camera on. I think it'd be against uh, all the Twitch uh, rules and things like that. We'd probably get banned, so I'm not going to be doing that today. Uh, Astronostic, thank you for the 11 months in a row subscribed. Thank you so much for your support. Um, can I get some? Laz Beardlicks in the chat for um, Mr. Astronostic. Um, so kind of in general news, guys, everybody knows that the Invitational went on this morning mm -hmm. uh, and Laz and Rytus did a cool special this morning before the uh, tournament and uh, it was to just kind of cover the general Invitational and what was going on. I'm going to let Laz kind of explain that whole interaction and what he thinks about the Invitational itself. Uh, I thought the Invitational was amazing. Like, I... I wasn't expecting it to be as entertaining as it was. Uh, the commentators were on point. Uh, they were extremely fun to listen to. And I think the whole setup that Daybreak was able to get into uh, Battle Royale with the spectation mode uh, was really, really fantastic. Uh, so I, I, I don't, I mean, wow. It, it's it, There's so much to talk about. And uh, I think the two winners, the first winner of the first match was actually a uh, a console, a Halo a Halo console pro, a professional gamer uh, for, yep. t for Team Liquid. Uh, his name was Ninja. He won the first round. Second round was Grimm's, uh, H1Z1 community guy, a really good player. And I think he has like the most matches out of all the players that were in the H1Z1 Invitational. So he, he did win... Uh, he did win first place for the second for the second game, and uh, that was that was one hundred and seventy three thousand dollars worth of prizes given away. Huge fan of Ninja. He's a really good guy, really good streamer. I love watching him because he's absolutely hilarious. Yeah, I mean, uh, I thought I thought the whole the whole setup of the invitation was wonderfully uh, made, um, and I and I'm glad to see how they handled it with the community and getting more people involved that weren't just Twitch streamers. Um, mm -hmm. And like you said. Uh, you know, I actually had my money on the chef. Uh, I thought that guy was going to win. Um, but really? I don't even think he placed. He, 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 he didn't make it very far at all. In, in no, he died spectacularly, <laughs> yes. though. <laughs> yeah. In a blaze of glory. His, his, yeah. his, his application video was worth it, though. Yeah, it was. I thought that was awesome. Um, I like it the first yeah. match, Cream killed himself. <laughs> he killed himself. Did you guys catch that? He killed yeah, himself. Yeah, Cream yeah. Wasn't it with a Molly? I don't actually know how he did it. Um, yeah, they didn't, they have, didn't the have the camera on him. on him at the time. But they said, oh, Cream just killed himself. Yeah, yeah if, I think if, he tried to molly was, somebody and then was, ended up walking through it himself. If I was in the Invitational and I, and I saw that my death was intimate uh, and I was not going to make top ten, I mean, I would just basically chosen Blaze of Glory and just done something to make the, the highlight reel, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I would just hide in a blackberry bush, as I always do, and then if I knew I wasn't going to win, I'd drop my gun, strip all my clothes, and just run around in big, wide circles, around and around, in a blaze of glory, <laughs> I would die. I think, I, I think you would have placed top ten. Cause I, I think I mean, so, too. Camping? What? Did they show a lot, of, a lot of players just camping? Yeah, well, and, there were and a just, lot of campers. Uh, there were a lot of campers, but after, <laughs> after watching this um, Invitational today, I loved it. I was yelling out loud at my computer, like, no, 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 Josh, no. <laughs> you know, and it made me want to play more aggressively. So I'm going to camp less, I've decided. I'm going to get that gun, and I'm just going to go out there and and uh, just be more aggressive, less camping. 
it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And the second, um, in the second match, there was a lot more people out there, right? Did you notice that? They weren't as hesitant as in the first match. People were really yeah. getting in there and just slaughtering I, each other in this small I think, space. I think with anything like this, you're really going to have, you know, people. I mean, first, it's the money, right? So to a lot of these people, yeah. $20,000 is a lot of money. And I'm not saying I'm different. I mean, $20,000 is a lot of money. Yeah. And so I think the first match, people were like, you know what? I should have just done things totally different like I normally would and just played the game. Um, and and that was the thing, you know, Grimm's, Grimm's, I'm glad he won the second one. I, I actually like the way he plays. Um, mm -hmm. For being a streamer and being able to win as many t times as he's done on stream uh, is is pretty amazing. And, it, and he's used to just multitasking and playing and he just smoothly runs through his stream. I think that helped him. Um, and I think a lot of people just didn't do them. Like they didn't play the way they normally play. And I think that was a big factor in it. And the money had a lot to do with it. Well, well, yeah, the money you had included a lot of pressure there. Well, the problem is, is uh, not not really the money, but the, the thing is, is most of the people there aren't used to playing in a public environment. They're used to being in their bedrooms, streaming on their computers, uh, and, and stuff like that. So, them being around all these people and an un, like a unfamiliar environment with different keyboards, different mice, different whatever, uh, it, it's it's a really big, really big thing that. Uh, that people don't understand like the factor of being around other people and having to perform at the same time. I bet yeah. the pre-invitational parties too made them really psyched up and they're like, yeah, I'm going to kill you. I bet yeah. they're a lot more psyched than sitting in their rooms. Playing. Exactly. I, I, I mean like that, that's exactly what I was thinking Laz. you know, just uh, me personally, I would have went straight to psychology games. You know, I just would have been coughing and just making sounds and dropping my, <laughs> no chair. sound. I mean, I would have just oh. been like trying to just mess people up. Uh, the whole time. Uh, they I turned actually, off sound. I well, think I would have had fun. Yeah, I think he's talking about like making noise outside of the game, like, like oh, knocking over like desks so and shit, <laughs> like just, right. just causing a ruckus to, to throw people's uh, concentration off. And legit, um, we know Space's strategy. He would have just taken his pants off and threw it at somebody real quick as a distraction, and then like ran into a house and blew them all up. You know what? To be honest, you know what I would have done? I would have probably walked into the main floor. Like and just in a in a in a regular normal H one Z one attire, I would have had just tidy whities on with a satchel. <laughs> uh, and I don't forget the racing helmet. On. Don't don't forget the white racing helmet to match the tidy okay. whities. I think that guy would have been badass, to be honest. I think one of the best deaths actually was when I don't even remember who it was right now. They shot a guy, killed him, and he got in his car and he ran over him for good measure. Like he edited uh, that, that, that was that was that was OP. That was OP. That was great. OP he, is such a great player. He's definitely made a fan of me. Yeah, I'm definitely yeah. a fan now. I, uh, he's actually a streamer, uh, and I don't know. The, the whole invitation was amazing. I think the the whole thing. Well. Most ninety nine percent of the invitation was amazing. The one percent that wasn't good was I didn't get in. That's that's my biggest complaint. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, def definitely I could have definitely placed. Made top. I, I could have made top ten yes. easily. Yeah, I, I I think Curvy Llama would have probably shot you in the head like from the start, dude. Probably I'm pretty sure. <laughs> you know, I would accept played, that death. She played uh, really cautiously. I I don't know if you guys were watching, but when they showed. Uh, when they showed the map from above and you could see the little dots of where all the players were, she was very, very cautious. And she was camping a lot and she was skirting that gas. And then she'd come in for the kill and just disappear really fast. So I was surprised at how she was playing. Something I'd like to ask these guys that went to the Invitational was the difference between doing it in your home, in your bedroom, and then being on the LAN, you know, being on that local area network, like the difference between, you know, just you're relying on other people's connections and now there there is no lag. There is no, right. you know, it's not like right is 50,000 miles away from me and I fire a shot, but you know, and then she fires a shot and I die, you know, there, there was none of that going on. So I'd really like to ask them, you know, like, what did you feel the difference between being on a regular internet connection and the local area network? Well, I think yeah, it would blow me away to be on a time, great computer you know? mm -hmm. and such sensitivity um, and stuff. I really think it comes down to kind of what Laz pointed out. I think it really came down to, uh, the money and the, 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 the environment, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think that most, I'd say most of these players aren't used to being in an environment like this um, where there's cameras, there's pressure, and there's money on the line. Um, you know, it takes, a, it, it takes a different quality of player. 
uh, you know, just like being a professional football player or being a professional anything, you know, uh, when you do it uh, in a set, in an environment you're comfortable in, and then they throw you in um, the the battle with the lion and, and, and 50,000 people, you know, you, you, you're going to go through some emotions and you're going to go through some, some hesitations on things. And I think that's why Laz really pointed out that the second match was just a lot, it seemed a lot more comfortable. A lot more mm-hmm. people were like, you know what, I'm just going to do what I normally do. Because I think that's how I got here in the first place. And it's well, something and, they stuck with. And Grimms, who was playing under the name Peru Never Wins, because he usually plays under Peru, always wins. Um, he actually said he wasn't even aware until somebody said something somewhere. He wasn't even aware he was in the top ten. He said he was just playing. That was actually a yeah, ninja. Ninja said that with the Halo guy. Oh, is it Ninja? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so at least one person we know, you know, it didn't bother them. They really got into the game. So a lot of the guys I see uh, watching League, uh, when I watch League of Legends and stuff like that, like uh, the championship series, like they just they try to drown out the crowd. You know, they just drown everything out and just play the game. You know, like they play to their style. They don't pay attention to the cameras, the lights, the crowd. You know, they just try to do what they do in the game, and you know they don't pay attention. Okay, we're fifty thousand gold ahead. You know, or we're five thousand gold ahead. You know, all they're trying to do is just play the game, and you know, like they said in the second game um it seemed like a lot of the guys started doing that like they just you know instead of worrying about what place i'm in or worrying about they just started playing the game and that's where you know in that second game is where a lot of like they really shined you know they weren't camping a room anymore waiting for somebody to come in they were actually trying to fight exactly um and i just uh, posted something in chat guys uh it is it was the picture of the uh, trophy uh, that you got for being first. Uh, it was a pigskin uh, trophy, which is looks extremely awesome. Um, <laughs> Many also, wars over that mask. Yeah, right. Uh, also, somebody there was a, a person um, who actually showed up there with some custom UN helmet, like mm-hmm. glossy uh, charmillion Charmi- colored helmet that, that has like awesome. cool H1Z1 logos that, that that he basically said, "Hey, I made these out of the kindness of my heart." you know, for whoever wants them, uh, or whoever wins. So that was kind of awesome to have. I think that those, those prizes over anything were kind of cool, uh, you know, to get those one of a kind type things. We need more people like that in the community. Honestly. <laughs> I, I mean, there's too many jerks like me running around, just KOSing people. We need guys yeah. coming in that want to make so, nice things. And so getting, I couldn't so, believe. So getting I'm sorry. That, uh, so getting into that t- topic right there, uh, we're gonna get. We're gonna switch switch modes. The invitational was was awesome, guys. I want to thank everybody who uh, were there and participated. And you know, I think it was a great thing for the game H one Z one itself. Uh, you know, we're sad to see Laz could not be in it, um, but we're hoping that there will be um, another H one Z one invitational here next year. Um, so that was that was awesome. You know, and Laz and Rice did a wonderful job this morning on the coverage on that and just talking about the whole thing going on today. I think it was a big thing in the in the industry. Uh, it was it was great, and it got a lot of attention. It got a lot of attention. One hundred and forty thousand uh, Twitch viewers, by the way. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely, it, it, and and that's a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, you know, it just so happens they have the game on sale. It's twenty five percent off, guys. Make sure you stop by tiny dot com and and pick that up if you're interested in getting in the game. Um, Battle Royale is still free, currently, and uh, there is a PvP side to it. Uh, Getting more into the the where is the focus going to be on, and, and if you're on the forums, if you're on Reddit, you know that people have been screaming and crying mm-hmm. and everything else under the sun about the game development. We know that the the developers have really honed in on this invitational, and they came out and said it. You know, hey, this is a big thing. We're going to focus on this, uh, but we are going to get to the PVP side. And and I really want to bring a lot of attention on that today because there is a large community of the PVP side of the game and where the focus is coming, uh, you know, with hospital points of interest, new zombie types, guilds and clan system, which I know something Lass has brought up mm-hmm. in the past, something he's really wanted. Uh, they talked about professions and that kind of version one coming out. Also, base building improvements, you know, the people have been screaming for base building, uh, base building improvements, uh, kind of for you, Tendaris, and we'll kind of just go down the line here. Uh, you know, 
being in part of that community and being in the community, uh, what are the things that you're looking forward to now that this invitational is over and the, the devs are going to be back to the, the game development, so to speak? You know, what is something, some of the things you're looking forward in? Um, number one thing I want fixed is these damn door bugs. I, anybody <laughs> who has been playing survival with us knows the struggle that we've been going through. I mean, it is just, you. after two weeks, you can run around with a demo hammer and, and just rob everybody blind. I mean, it is just, it, and it's getting bad because that's how we're getting raided now. Like, we're not even being raided legit. It's not like they're using massive amounts of IEDs and ethanol like we do to blow these bases. They're just running around with a demo hammer looking for a door or a gate that takes damage. Mm -hmm. So number one thing I believe they need to work on is fixing that door bug. After that... Let's start talking about professions and new zombies and all. But for right now, let's fix the game as is and then start thinking about adding more stuff in because there is just too much going on that our builders are done. They have wiped their hands with the base. You know, they want nothing to do with building and repairing and fixing these doors. And they, I, and I don't blame them. I mean, a lot of us have started building our own bases, like, outside of Dirty Deeds, just to, you know, compensate for this so we have a safe place to store our stuff. But right now, it's, like, the only secure... The only way you can secure your stuff in this game at the moment is to log out with it. Mm -hmm. So, unless you have three accounts that you can log multiple characters into your barracks room and rip all your stuff out of your storage containers and log off with it, you may as well just kiss that stuff goodbye because you're going to log in tomorrow and there's like, I would say, 75, 80% chance that it's going to be all gone. You know, and a lot of guys have been experiencing this and it, I know how frustrating it is for them and I really hope Daybreak really... You know, start now that the invitational is over. I really hope they start paying more attention to survival again, because I remember I've been playing the game since release, and they were paying so much attention to survival at the beginning. Like it was beautiful. You know, every week, every day for like the first week this game was out, we were in patches every day to fix, you know, survival, like survival bugs and glitches and all these problems. And now it's like all. <clears throat> I don't want to say all they care about is Battle Royale, but ever since they announced the Invitational, it seems like all they care about is Battle Royale. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and to be honest, I mean, that's just what they came out and said it. They came out and said, look, this is a big thing. And it was a big thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the Invitational was a big thing for the game. It was a good thing for the game. Um, and they came out and said, hey, we're going to stop, you know, the, the, the and, and it wasn't really they're going to stop forward progress. Um, because they still got guys working on that side of the game. They, they issued out a lot of updates. They've issued out materials. Um, but I agree with you, you know, on, on the point of that focus on the game, the door bug is just detrimental. I mean, it, it has given people the, the false security of putting their, their, their items in a base, having security in the game. And without security, kind of take away that whole PVP side of it, you know, um, it's like if you had nothing to protect your Titan. Yeah. And well, I, I, See, like, I've got two just... accounts. I've got two accounts just for that. Uh, I always log. I used to always log out with with the important stuff that I wanted to keep. See, and like Holder just brought up another good um, point of another bug that's out there right now is being able to spam E under a deck foundation to get Again? inside the vehicle. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that memory <clears throat> leak has been fixed yet or not. I haven't actually tested it myself. But this also goes towards shacks as well. If you crouch underneath a shack, like if you can get underneath it, <clears throat> and poke your head up through the bottom of it, and there's a storage container there, you can loot that entire storage container. There's nothing stopping you. you know. And a lot of guys, not naming names, but there's been a lot of guys who have been going out and doing this and coming back and home. <laughs> and coming back home with, you know, like hundreds of am you know, hundreds of rounds of ammo, bombs, you know, bullet components. They've just been coming home full geared head to toe and all they've had to do is crouch underneath a shack. Mm -hmm. Or the other bug run up in front of it and you know, if you if crouching underneath it doesn't work, you run up in front of it and hit it with a demo hammer. One of those two ways are going to get you in that shack. 
Yeah, it, 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 there's no there's no doubt that there there are just some horrible bugs in the game right now. Um, and I know there's just there's a long list of just you know things that they're gonna have to deal with at this point. And for all we know, there there are already solutions in place, and there's gonna be a, an update on Tuesday. Um, you know, Laz, what do you what do you see as far as the development and and where it's going? right now and what would you like to see i know i know clans and guild slash guild systems were kind of something you you really wanted to see in the game uh i mean like short term uh, short term i mean it'd be pretty pretty good uh to see them get the clan stuff in for like with the building and group building and stuff like that uh and being able to note like see your see targets like see see friendlies easier for info identification they need something that to help make that easier like so if clan members you can see farther away uh and then clan members don't have to enter passcodes to enter doors i think that'd be really really amazing uh after that uh i would i would love to see more customization done with the guns uh like either add add more guns or add uh, weapon mods I mean, everyone loves to mod their guns. They're, they're like, it's... See, <laughs> like, I agree with Laz yeah, right here. Laz, I, want... I think Laz, Laz got super happy when, like, the gun skins came out because it was like CSGO uh, meets H1Z1 type of thing. Well, I don't actually... Uh, I don't care about the I skins. I can't wait till Player Studio comes out, to be honest, for H1Z1. I would love for that to happen. I feel like we have enough weapons, but, like, Laz, I would like to see weapon modification, adding right. scopes to, like, the AR-15 or the AK-47, mm-hmm. laser sights to pistols, you know, stuff like that. And this could be stuff you can either build from things you find in the environment, or these are pieces you just find in the environment. And, you know, like, if you find a suppressor and it's at, like, you know, 200 durability, okay, I have a repair kit in my room, mm-hmm. and now I repaired this, and I'm going to attach it to my weapon, so now my 45 pistol has a suppressor on it. You know, mm-hmm. I'm going to be able to blop you from much further away with my 45 pistol and you, you know, not I, hear I'm gonna, it. I'm going to I'm going to be a little devil advocate here because I think that really is going to take away you know you're now turning H1Z1 into Call of Duty. Um I agree there should be some up, upgrades but I think they should be super rare. Um I think <laughs> there should be I think you should introduce more things that would make the game very interesting but keep them rare. Keep them only in a worn letter, keep them only in a in a in in, in a super rare thing. You know, kind of, kind of like when you find skin, something mm-hmm. that's skinned in the game that's on the market for like two hundred dollars. You know, I, you're gonna, you're gonna hold it and keep it and only wear it on special occasions. Um, I think that if they keep it that way, because I'm just, I don't know, I'm a little, I'm, I'm, I'm all for keeping the game a zombie survival PvP MMO game, not turning oh. it into. Uh, Call of Duty. Well, the way it worked in in, uh, in DayZ was you had to have like when when DayZ first came out, the DayZ mod for Armor Two uh, is there was very very there was, you, you could get the M4A1 SD uh, and you can get the M9 SD. But even though you had the, the the weapons, even though you had the weapons, the two silenced weapons, if you didn't have the actual SD ammo, you couldn't. It wasn't a silenced weapon. So I I, I, I think it was a decent system to where you had to have the matching silenced uh, silen- silencer like rated ammo uh and to go with the actual silenced gun uh so may- maybe they could come up with something like that uh but but i definitely agree that they should come up with some sort of uh additional sites for the game uh getting a kai going to your uh ar-15 or just, just just something yeah see like um what you were devil's advocate over there space um, but what you were saying, like something they are talking about doing is making things area specific spawning. So like the weapon upgrade could be at the military base or the police station, you know, make those specific to those areas because oh, yeah. something I see, like something I've been wanting personally is for them to limit the amount of player made structures that can be in one area. So then that would bring out the turf wars, you know, like how we have control of dirty deeds and not simply because we've built so many bases there, but because we patrol that area, we have like 10 guys ready to respond to any kind of threat. You know, you hear puppy getting called out. You got dudes pouring out of all three barracks converging on this location. Like like a giant swarm ready to murder this one person that just showed up in our area. You know, and I feel like if you could build less in a specific area that would also bring out the turf wars, it would make each area a little bit more valuable. And then if you make like gun parts, you know, like a suppressor or a sight or a scope spawn at the military base, that would also 
bring more well, attention to the military base. You know what? I think I think I think you kind of hit hit it right off. You know, mm-hmm. a, a very important point. You know, it, it, when when the game changes things, you know, it's, you have a ripple effect. Uh, the, the 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 game changes throughout, and the players change the way they think about the game. And I think that's a very good point about saying, hey, if less places can be built on. There will be more demand for those areas uh, because it's very hard to build. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, speaking of these updates, this is kind of to Ritus because I know Ritus is a super, you know, super secret. I like hiding in Jeeps in Battle Royale. I don't know. Are you going to talk about the new vehicle? I am. I am. I am going to bring this up just for for her. Um, I'm going to link a YouTube channel. If anybody has not seen this yet, it is the... Uh, release of the inside behind the scenes type it's awesome. thing for so the hype TV ATV and right is can you give your feelings and comments about what you think about this uh, because and, and and just a quick quick before you answer uh, if anybody would remember a couple months ago when we had our monthly streaming event we had Steve George um, and we kind of talked about uh, VH and. You know, we all joked around, oh, what about a bicycle or, you know, a motorcycle or yeah, a scooters. And this is kind of cool to see the first, you know, different besides a truck, a truck, Jeep and a police car. What do you think, Ritus? Yeah, an ATV. Um, I guess I guess a couple people can ride it. Um, I don't feel any more exposed. Well, when I first saw the video, I thought, oh, gosh, I'm going to be sitting duck on that thing. But I won't feel any more exposed than in a car. I feel like uh, hopefully it will be more handleable than the Jeeps. So even you can drive one. Right. SpaceX. Right, right, right. And, yeah, so um, I think it'll be great. Um, even though I'm going to get more aggressive, I plan to be more aggressive with my play style. I'm going to start that, but I like the ATV a lot. If I get an ATV, I'm riding around the ga- game, blasting fighters and riding dirty through my right. proxy all day long. Like, that is going to be my whole day for, like, three days. You know, it's just that's, That just brings me right back to February when... Uh, and I don't know how many of you were playing this game back then, but you could actually go into run mode and sit... And you would slide around the map. People would just slide the around the map on their butts. Yes. And the butt scoot. Playing, riding dirty. <laughs> Bring back the butt scoot. Yeah, that was fun. And then we could do it over water and things like that. But I think the ATV will be fun. And I hope that they make it a different uh, ride. You know, actually better able to handle different terrain. I don't know if they have the ability to do that. Mm-hmm. Also, did you see the ghillie suit? Yeah, so get a yeah. ghillie suit, get on that ATV, and you're ready to go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, getting into our very specific kind of PvP section uh, of the talk. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, Lashana, who shout outs to Lashana, who is a very active member within Imperium and plays with us, wrote a very great article, and I'm going to link it in chat right now about his PvP experience. Um, if you have a chance, take a look at it and read it. It was it was basically about they went out, did some did some crazy stuff, uh, and you know it was it was really awesome because when I was reading it, some of the quotes it's like uh, you know go 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 and and just different things he quoted in there from from who Spanx is the the leader of Imperium Army in H one Z and it was it was it was it was kind of awesome to see because uh, you know for once I kind of saw what other people saw in the game and it was kind of a you know first person view of, of, of what we kind of go through um tendaris did you have a chance to read the article what do you think about it I did read the article front to back i've read it like three times over uh, it was first off i just got to say lashana that was written very very well <laughs> yes from it was a it creative was very good. from somebody who's been writing since i could hold the pen that was written so very well i absolutely loved reading it i love the quote from spanky's big shout outs to the commander love spanky's um but the article itself was absolutely amazing everything in there is 100 accurate of the crazy insanity it's the crazy things we do all day long and i mean it, it was just an amazing read from start to finish i absolutely loved it you know speaking of that and uh rating and things the imperium does uh and then going back to turf wars and what you're talking about having fewer structures within a certain area um that goes right back to let's increase the number of people on servers 
looking forward to when the servers can handle more zombies. Mm. Uh, speaking of, you know, they, there's different zombie types coming out, and let's see some more basic zombies. I want a tank zombie coming after me in the middle of Pleasant Valley, please. Like, I have to run to the police station, and then all of a sudden you just hear, STARS! <laughs> <laughs> I would crap myself. Literally, I would be right? in the basement at a police station. Like, Please don't find me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, speaking of, of just a little more glitches, um, you know, there is a current B box glitch out there. Mm. Bees, for some reason, they they you know you rotate the box it'll do with no honey and i had personally this problem i know a couple other people had and you had to completely demo your b-box and then replace it um kind of rolling into the topic of, of hackers which are still out there um mm. i know last night on stream uh, i had a chance of getting you know one actually three of us we got one shot in uh, like within as fast as you can pull the trigger instantly um, Instantly, and you know, it is what it is. I, I know they're out there. We're gonna expect it. I've already my me mentally. I've I've I worked myself past the fact that there are, uh, you know, hackers in the game, and they're gonna continue to, to pester people. But you know, um, I'm hoping that really with with all the updates that they real that Daybreak really starts to 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 focus um, to a a. a a solution sooner than later um, with hackers and you know to those people who, who are uh, involved in that uh, you know thank you for your hard work and continue uh, contribution to the game uh, but yeah I mean I know they piss off people uh, Naris what is your view uh, without getting too negative uh, on hackers well first off I would like and to that's just... just in case we have anybody nearby that has their ears a little sensitive <laughs> well um, I, I would just like to say first and foremost most, we stop calling them hackers. They're cheaters. I mean, it, mm -hmm. hackers. Hacker is somebody who changes code. They're the ones that are actually making these programs that these guys are using. Guys who are just using these programs are just cheaters. They're pretty much, you know, I'm a little old here, so I'm going back to the days of like Nintendo. But these are the same guys that used to put a game genie in is, their is Nintendo. Nintendo. Is Nintendo now considered old? <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. know. Nintendo's Airport pretty old, bro. Nintendo's you know, pretty old. It's like collector's <laughs> editions. Well, I, I had a Nintendo when that thing first launched, so I feel kind of old here. But, uh, I mean, these are the same guys. You know, They're not hackers. They're cheaters. They're the same guys that used to use, like, Game Genie and Game Shark, or they would, you know, pay nine ninety nine a month and get, like, the Game Pro magazine yeah. and have, like, six pages of codes in the back of it. <laughs> you know, they're not, like, I, I personally know hackers. They're really good people. They do mm -hmm. it for the fun of it. These guys are doing it maliciously. You know, they're doing how it do you, specifically. How the, how the heck do you put... I, they're nice people with hackers because i mean i'm and i just gotta stop there because i know I'm, me I, my personal <laughs> well, I mean, you talk to if, these guys in real you, life if you if you people. spent money to to hurt a game and the development of the game and it and hurt the community and i don't care if you do it maliciously or not maliciously you're doing it you know it, just because you rob someone with a smiley face they just and, don't want to do the well, work of looking you, for the and stuff you, and themselves. And you break into their car, and you're not going to go in and pistol whip them and treat them like sure. crap while you rob them. You're still a thief. I mean, Well, the difference wrong. to me is that the hackers, the guys that are actually making the program that these, you know, that the kids are using and, like, cheating at the game, I feel like these guys are just trying to show Daybreak. You know, a lot of these guys are really just trying to show Daybreak the flaws in their game. They're just trying to show them, you know, like, hey, I can do this to your game. You, you need to fix this, you know, and then you got another group of guys who are selling this program and, you know, they're just being, I'm trying to keep my language clean here for the stream, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, like that's the difference to me is that you got one group of guys that are trying to show daybreak, like, look, this is what I'm doing to break your game. You guys need to fix this. And then you got another group of guys on the other side who are like, okay, I know how to break this game. So now I'm going to sell it for nine 99 a month and let everybody and break the game. You know, like you got a bunch of kids floating around, you know, flying around the game, aim botting, ESPing, you know, th those are the, trash you know but like i said i know 
guys that you know you would classify them as hackers in real life. You know, I've talked to them. You know, I've hung out with them. They're good guys. You know, I mean, they're just like, bad at video games. Yeah, they're just <laughs> bad at video games. So they have. Yeah, games, I mean, I mean, you know? I know, I know all kinds of drug dealers and people. I mean, <laughs> right, they're still a drug dealer. At, right? at the end of the day, they're still a drug dealer. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, uh, well, you can well, remember on that, back in May with a game thirty thousand uh, cheaters. I do. Oh, Laz, have you had any any very nice hackers that you love grabbing some beers with on the weekend? Uh, <laughs> no, but I do know people. I do know people like you saying that uh they, they do it for the challenge and not not like to break the game but those people don't actually market it it's the people it's the hackers that hack it and then market it that that's should be should be going you know, to go die in a fire you know i've always said that, said that, that i could only respect the hacker <laughs> that literally his sole purpose in the game is to only run around the server and to kill other hackers Hackers. That's all he does. He's like Superman. Yes. Of, 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 yeah, of, yeah, nobody nobody, nobody reports him. Are you sure they don't all say him. that? It's like, here comes Silent Bob, and we know Silent Bob <laughs> is the, the hero of, 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 of the people. There's actual hacker battles. It's I, I well, met the he's, same. He's the hero we deserve, not the one we need right now. I also know some hackers, when they get banned, they buy another account, and then they buy another account, and they buy four accounts or five accounts, and they keep getting banned. Mm -hmm. or, they, or they, um... They buy it when it's on sale, like right now, you know, they're going to go out and get like two, three copies of it, or they buy it when they release it in a bundle. You know, here's four copies of H1Z1 for twenty nine ninety nine. you know, is the sound quality going down? Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm not sure what it is. It, it, it's either your connection or, or something. I don't know. But we, let's just, just, just roll with it. I'm, ha I'm hacking through my cell phone right now and it's We've, going through, through his internet. Well, we got, we got seven but, minutes left on the show. So we, we're, we're going to tough it out. Yeah, we're going to tough it out, damn it. So moving on to uh, farming. I know this is a big thing, and I know moving on to the next uh, server wipe, um, we're, we're looking at mass areas of farming because uh, there are only some areas in the game where you can lay down a mass amount of TAMs without having to travel long distances. Mm -hmm. um, well, what, do you, what would you consider a mass amount, a mass amount of TAMs? I would say... Right, I just want to say about typing. Eight to ten tamps within the same area that you don't have to run around for twenty minutes going to each one. And I mean, in total time, you know, because I think most areas you can get maybe two, three, but to get like ten to fifteen in the same area, um, there's only so many areas within the map that allow that many together. Yeah, well, See, know. like, one of the places I feel like he's talking about right now, like, one of the places he's specifically trying to hint to is the dam. Yeah. Because you can make a giant super mega base at the dam, and there, there's nothing preventing you from doing that, you know? Well, like, and you said the dam, uh, and uh, the water, the water, uh, I'm not sure if you can still build tamps in the water or not, uh, right there uh, towards... Uh, towards the city right there uh, to the what east yeah to the east uh in the water there you can get i think like 10 tamps right next to each other it's yep. just ridiculous yeah. yeah i actually drove by there on a few different servers just messing around and on mm -hmm. every server i went to there is just a giant mega base in the water at the dam okay yeah so we're talking about the exact same spot then yeah Yes. Yeah. Um. You know, under the. Yeah, I was. I, yeah. I'm talking about the dam. I'm talking about cranberry in mm -hmm. the water. I'm talking about. Um. You know, north of Lone Pine at the villas. Uh. You know, the villas has always been the obvious flatland area. Uh. Place. Um. Camps. Uh. And that's really that's usually where I mean besides the water areas that's really the only other areas I've seen where mm -hmm. people have built massive base, massive large bases. Um. You know, so it, 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 I think when the game, as the game develops, most of these areas are going to, there's going to be a demand for them, uh, especially as people start doing like we are mass producing uh, ethanol for base rating and, and these kinds of things. I mean, what do, you, what do you guys think? Once again, this falls back on my whole mm -hmm. statement I made earlier need to limit the amount of bases that you can put in one area, meaning ground tamps, deck foundations, 
you know, like they need to limit the amount of these items being placed in an area to prevent that from happening. Um, the villas development, like you mentioned, has always been a huge spot for super bases, and that's because of the amount of flatland that's there. You know, you can just drop tamp after tamp, one right after the other, in this one lot and have like a nine tamp base and just build up on top of that and then nobody can touch you you know because you have so many gates and so many shelters and so many walls and it's like the amount of resources it would take to crack this base would not be worth what you're going to get out of it you know you get a couple hundred rounds of ammo and a little bit of ethanol back out of it and it's like okay that was totally not even worth it you know but if they limit the amount of tamps you can put in one area I feel like that would help that a lot, you know, so then people can't build these huge nine tamp bases that would also help uh, server lag, server mm -hmm. stability, because right now on Abomination, if you go into Pleasant Valley, I run 60 frames a second everywhere except Pleasant Valley. And it's just because of the amount of bases that are there. I mean, it's also it's also because of the amount of zombie activity that's going on there, too, as well. Um, well, I mean, I go up to Governor's Mansion, and there is thousands of zombies up at Governor's Mansion. You go yeah. up there, you can hunt player zombies, like, well, all day long. You know, there's, a lot, there's a lot more activity going on in PV with buildings and uh, items and respawning. I mean, there's just so much stuff. But yeah, you're right. You know, the population in PV is way higher than anyone else um, when you go into PV and Cranberry like that. Um, guys, I want to thank everybody for staying by. I want to mm -hmm. thank Tendaris. Thank you so much for being our ho our guest star here today. Um, no, I was the host. Is, you had he, a was, he was he was semi he was an, he was a semi host. Uh, the hostess with the most. You can always find him no more no farther than fifteen feet from Lori inside the game. <laughs> Don't uh, let him convince you to come inside, uh, though. Yeah, yeah, he he, Lori, he convinced Lori, uh, you know, nice young sweet lady, uh, to go inside his his uh, his room, and it just was over from there. And now she's um, she is a straight up killer, guys. Like, do not yeah. mess with Lori because, as Space <laughs> said, I'm 15 feet right behind her, and she has a pet deer. <laughs> if wow. she doesn't kill you, I will. That's pretty uh, much so what it comes make, to. <laughs> make sure you guys pick up the game. Make sure you guys, uh, you know. <laughs> Join, join the, join, the, join in on the fun in the Imperium Army. Uh, I'm gonna let Laz, since my, my, my sound, my voice sounds like a robot. I'm gonna let Laz go ahead and take it away for the uh, thank yous to mm -hmm. the sponsors as well as uh, our website and also what's coming up next. Yeah. So, guys, uh, quick shout out to Daybreak Games. Uh, all of our, all those TMC codes, those sweet, sweet his regard skins, helmets, uh, t-shirts. Those are all from TMC. Uh, and Daybreak Games gave those codes to us for you. I'll link that again in chat. If you don't already have those skins, you can go to that link, register for the website, and then you can get a code to redeem inside the game. So make sure you do that, get those codes. And uh, the next off, guys, we do have uh, a our community inside the game uh, Imperium is always recruiting. If you want to join us, you all you have to do is you. You can get on our mumble all you have to do is register for the account just like the tmc codes so if you register for the codes you can get on our mumble you can uh talk to our guys and get into worked into our system and uh have a lot of fun uh next up guys uh youtube channel demon tiny tv make sure you check it out i've actually this what was it thursday thursday or thursday actually uh my ak-47 video was posted so my ak-47 tutorials out there and then next up, we uh, big shout out to Blue Yeti. Uh, you can't see Space Mexicans. Uh, there's Right is holding hers up. See my eye. Yep. We, we, so Blue Yeti does sponsor our, our streams. One of our biggest sponsor, only partnerships right now, uh, besides Daybreak. Thank you so much for the uh, the sound quality here. If you have never had a Blue Yeti, you don't really really realize what you're missing. It's amazing. It really um, is. With that, guys, coming up next is the boat show. Thanks again to uh, to the boat show. The boat show thanks again to our guests for coming on and yes. uh, everyone for being here today thanks for having me guys it was a lot of fun thanks. Bye. all right guys take care yes, Bye. everyone have a good day